innovations around the Kelvin valve controllers. As we go through the presentation, the chat function will be disabled, so communication will be through the Q&A screen only. We encourage you to submit your questions there, and we'll address them during the designated Q&A segments. Now I'd like to introduce our presenters. First, we have Stephen Coaster. Steve holds a degree in electrical engineering from University of Missouri at Columbia. He is currently the applications engineering lead specializing in refrigeration systems. His co-presenter today is Brandon Diedeker. Brandon is currently working as an application engineer at our Washington, Missouri headquarters and earned a Bachelor of Science of Technology Management in Computer Networking and Telecommunications. Additionally, all attendees to today's presentation will receive a follow-up email after the webinar containing the resources and materials presented today. Now, let's get started. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Brandon and welcome to the Kelvin 2 platform presentation. Kelvin 2 is a stepper valve controller used in various applications on refrigeration and HVAC systems. The Kelvin 2 lineup of controls have advanced features and all can communicate with Modbus and the superheat chiller and pressure control also support BACnet communication protocol. Today, we will, we will be giving an overview of the Kelvin 2 platform and how they are used. There are various installation bulletins for each of the Kelvin products. All of the information discussed in this presentation can be found in the bulletin shown here. For additional literature on the Kelvin 2 platform, visit Sporland.com or use the QR code provided on the slide. Thanks, Brandon. We will start with the superheat controller, which is used to operate an electric expansion valve to control superheat, ensuring the liquid refrigerant is boiled off before it leaves the evaporator and heads to the compressor. Utilizing the inputs from the pressure transducer and temperature sensor, the controller uses algorithms to optimize the EEV's position to maintain the desired amount of superheat across the evaporator coil. Sporlin has a full array of electric expansion valves available to meet various load conditions in both residential and commercial applications. This diagram shows a typical installation for the superheat controller with the pressure transducer and temperature sensor location at the after the evaporator coil. We have updated the refrigerant list on the Kelvin 2 series to include some of the newer refrigerants coming into use, such as R454B, 448, and 449A, and CO2 continues to be an option on the Kelvin 2 superheat control as well. The subcool and chiller control both control to liquid out, temp, and monitor superheat. They will take over superheat control if the superheat drops too low. The main difference between these two controls is the cutoff temperature configuration. The subcool control uses an offset. For example, if you have a 50 degree liquid set point, and set the subcooler off temperature differential is set to 30, a 30 de degree offset will turn the subcool controller off at 20 degrees. While this is fine for a subcooler application, a chiller could have problems running the liquid temp out that low, and the chiller control has a hard low temperature cutoff. So if you set the low temperature cutoff to 30, when the liquid out temperature reaches 30 degrees, the chiller control will close the EEV and turn off refrigeration. The subcool control is commonly used with low temperature supermarket rack systems. The chiller control is designed for use on primary chillers for secondary coolant, such as glycol systems in supermarkets and commercial buildings. Although these controllers maintain superheat, it is not recommended to use either in place of a superheat controller. There are many types of subcooling schemes. Here's one typical piping diagram for a subcooler with a subcool control installed for a supermarket. Another adaptation of the Kelvin 2 is a temperature control. This Kelvin 2 uses temperature readings to control an electric valve. The valve can either be an evaporator pressure regulator or a hot gas bypass regulator. It is important to note that this Kelvin 2 only controls off of temperature. On the left is a schematic of the temperature control using the discharge airstream to position a CDS valve. On the right, the temperature control uses discharge air temp to regulate an SDR valve uh, for hot gas bypass instead. The pressure control is used to actuate an electric valve to help regulate the pressures at the point the transducer is attached in the system. 
This valve can be an SDR or CDS valve, depending on multiple applications for refrigeration and commercial HVAC. Pressure control CDS schematic. This diagram on the right shows the various uses of the pressure control throughout the system. A pressure control can be used to regulate your condenser, receiver, evaporator, and liquid pressures. Each of, the, each of these applications has the pressure transducer in the location where you wish to influence pressure. This transducer will read your pressure and transmit it to the controller. The controller will take that information to determine if the CDS valve needs to open or close. The placement of the pressure transducer changes due to the application the controller is being used in. The pressure control SDR schematic. On the left, we have a pressure control paired with an SDR. This is one variation of what a hot gas bypass system can look like. The SDR valve regulates off the suction pressure. More information about the additional components and applications for each controller can be found in Form 100-543 on Sporlin.com. To learn more about these and other Sporlin products, please visit Sporlin.com. And then we're going to do a live uh, demonstration of how to set up a Kelvin 2 real quick. Give me one second to get that set. Here we have a Kelvin 2, and when you plug it in right out of the box, it's going to ask for the number of steps for your electric expansion valve. If you go ahead and click this button here, it gives you all of our options for steps. We're going to go 2500, click to confirm. It's going to ask for the refrigerant. Again, you scroll through that refrigerant list, select which refrigerant you're going to use. T type is your temperature probe type, whether it's 98. 2K, a 3K, go ahead and select 3K. P type, again, is gauge or absolute pressure transducers. Units for temperature, we have Fahrenheit and Celsius. Units for pressure, we have PSI and bar. And if you can't tell, I'm just rotating this knob to select between the options, go PSI. And then it is set up and it will be controlling superheat if you had a valve and sensors attached. And then one other Quick note of reference, if you wanted to reset this back to factory after it's set up, if you go ahead and shut me off there. Once the Kelvin 2 turns off, push and hold this button, continue to hold it, go ahead and power it back on. It's going to say FRST. Once you let go, it will finish booting, and then it'll be back asking the number of steps to the valve and you can go back through the startup process from step one. That could be helpful if you're doing a retrofit or changing valves and you don't wanna navigate the long menu, you can go ahead and make sure the basics are set up correct and uh, go from there. And that is the Kelvin 2 platform in a nutshell. Thank you, gentlemen. If anyone at this point has any questions for the Q&A segment, feel free to insert them currently. I'm not seeing any at the moment, but we will give it a moment just for anyone who might have anything. Uh -huh. Not seeing any questions at the moment. Oh, there is one from Michael Berg about Bluetooth compatibility. Yeah, Kelvin 2 does not have Bluetooth compatibility. The only external communications is going to be through Modbus through RS-485 or, you know, the controllers that support BACnet again through RS-485. And we have a next question of, did I miss it or is our... 455A, not an option. Um, I will have to go back to the refrigerant list for that. Give me one second. 55A. That does not look like it's currently on the list. And then that seems to be the last question I have at the moment. Uh, I guess at that point, I will be closing us out. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar on the Kelvin controllers. We hope you found this information helpful. 
A big thank you to our presenters, Steve Coaster and Brandon Diedeker, for sharing their expertise with us. Be sure to keep an eye out on your email for uh, follow-up emails that will be including reference materials about items discussed today. We really appreciate your participation. If you enjoy this session, we'd love to hear, or we'd love for you to join us for our next webinar, where we will be exploring the S3C product highlights with Adam Hughes and Matt Wood on May 2nd. Keep an eye out on our social media channels for announcements and registration details. This session was recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel, where you can also check out our videos, shorts, and training videos. Thanks again, and everyone have a great day.